Well, hello everyone. Uh, good to be back making a video for you all. Today we've got something very, very special. I am very excited about it. I'm so excited. I even bought a new mat just so you wouldn't have to look at this filthy one underneath here because it, it it's it's disgusting. So just for just for this video, we've got a brand new mat to feature the classic classic Klingon Bird of Prey re-released uh, again by AMT Round 2 Polar Lights um, with this fantastic new box art. I love this box art and uh, we're gonna open it up, uh, check it out, look at the parts, and then uh, I've also got a couple previous releases of the this kit that we can uh, take a comparison to. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and take a quick look at the box your standard information there got some nice graphics on the side here got some movie screenshots as you can see and they're specifically calling this one the uh, search version seen in search for Spock um, but have our dome base which is nice we've got uh, some new water slide decals um, at least new relative to the original release of the kit having the uh, shoulders, the wing part decals. And then we've got the uh, symbols and uh, some Klingon glyphs. But we show show the different uh, poses. You can do the attack, flight, and then the landed. And then we've got a little blurb down here. Uh, kind of a retelling of Star Trek Three. So let's open the box. I haven't really looked at this yet. Let's see what we got here. Oh, there's a cardboard box, the inside of it. Very interesting. All right, and then let's see. I'll take the stuff out here. <clears throat> and a big, huge thanks to Mario over at All Scale Trek for uh, letting me uh, do this for you guys. Um, I can't think of enough. A fantastic modeler. Obviously, if you're watching this, you've seen his stuff, I would imagine. Um, and it's it's uh, you know his videos help me make a, help make me a better modeler. He's so not he's a better filmer than I am. I could definitely say that, but uh, and has a, probably a better modeler as well. And excellent excellent stuff. So I uh, like I said, big huge shout out to him and the people at All Scale Trek and the people at um, Round Two Models, Polar Lights, AMT, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and. I'm just going to take all this stuff out. We can take a quick look at the box here. Um, we can look at it upside down or we can look at it right side up. Uh, nice. This is kind of cool. They've got <clears throat> screen caps from the movie kind of permeating the side here, which is really nice because now you get a little bit of reference. And they're all different too, so that's really cool. Um, you get a, a bunch of really nice uh, model reference shots from the movie right there on the box um but no real paint guide it seems like um we'll check out the instructions here they probably have some sort of paint guide but i was always of the opinion i mean if you're going for the search for spock slash voyage home bird of prey go with the studio model but i always thought the bird of prey should have all looked slightly different kind of like x-wings like they should have had you know different panels either replaced but or different markings especially so the nice thing about this kit is you could buy a whole case of them and everyone could be different and it could be you know perfectly canonical because i i mean they kept reusing the same model and the same cgi models when they had it on uh later incarnations but i always thought they should all look a little different so um we'll think about more of that later let's take a look at the directions I like the new style directions I like the new logo and everything <clears throat> usual basic stuff all right so it looks like right off the bat they want you to pick a uh, uh, mode for the shoulder pot the shoulder wings um, which is very nice the original release of the kit only had two it had the attack and then kind a, a cruise mode but I think they've changed it because it's a little more aggressive up. And I we'll take a look at the other kit, the Generations release. But they were a little more flat 
um, as I recall. So I really like that they changed it to be a little more aggressive up because you see that a lot in TNG and stuff where the like the Cavort class in yesterday's Enterprise kind of has more of an aggressive up rather than it just being flat. So um, let's see. Don't you love my filming setup where it's easy to see all this? And then we've got cannons. We've got um, installing some of the new parts for the landing gear. And installing the landing gear, which is... What a, what a wonderful thing they've included. And just the extra parts to make that. And they're in metal, too, so you're not going to have it sag over time. And some more wing assembly. <clears throat> oh, good. We have a nice... Nice paint guide here on the back. Uh, more general assembly. And I, I believe this is pretty much the same as the last two releases of this kit. Um, but we'll we'll take a look at that. And then the real nice, really nice thing they've uh, done with these more recent releases is include um, the uh, classic round two base for easy display. Of course, if you have it landed, then you're kind of set there. So we have a really nice um, paint guide, updated paint guide. This is cool. That way we have Tamiya paints for suggestion. Um, my most, Certainly my favorite paints. <clears throat> so let's see. Let me get this all in the shot here. Uh, really nice detailed paint guide. Um, for these guys, you just get the four and then you can cut them um, you know, cut them up a little bit for however, whichever, uh, flight mode you have, and then you'll just slice it based on, you know, how big it is, if that makes any sense. And then we've got the bottom. So, very nice cohesive instructions there, I like that. Alright, and the round two base here. Got that. All right, let's take a look at the parts. Or I guess we'll really quick take a look at the decals. Now, one minor thing. It's not really a criticism, but and and they specifically said they're going for the search for Spock version. And I'm sure there's some caveats to my complaint, but one cool thing that would have been neat is to have an HMS Bounty decal, if you're trying to do as it appeared in Star Trek IV, and then uh, something else, but I won't say what that is in case, for spoiler purposes. But um, it would have been cool to have that. Having said that, I don't. maybe there's something about using HMS that requires some kind of license or... You know, using two movies as another license or something, or, you know, maybe it's not as, doesn't work as a decal, I don't know. The nice thing is it looks like in the movie it's supposed to be, they hand painted it on, so you can probably get away with brushing that on if you're careful. So, but if all possible, that would have been nice to have a little HMS bounty decal to put on the side um, if you were doing the Star Trek Four version. So, uh, really nice looking decal set. Nice, clear, crisp decals. Um, hopefully these will go on nicely. I love the detail in that. I'll set those aside. Because knowing me, I'll drop them in a random pool of water that just appeared. Uh, since it's sitting right here, we'll look at the clear parts. <clears throat> these look the same as the old kits, but nicely detailed. And um, there are several, at least, well, at least one um, nice after, or it seems to be, I haven't built it myself, but it seems to be a nice aftermarket set uh, available for this kit for photo etch and resin upgrades and stuff like that. So you can really do a lot with this kit. And I think this is one of the better vintage kits that um, they made. I the first release was 95, according to Scalemates, and we've got that over here. Um, and I think for the detail and, um, how the thing assembles and everything, I think they did a really nice job for, um, for that age. On the back, it does say 2010, so this is part, this is part of the original retooling, looks like. So, nothing too different there if you're familiar with the old kit, or the original release. Um... <clears throat> 
Let's see, let me we'll save the shoulders for last. We've got our wing. Really nice detail in the wing. Got some um, ejector pin marks. Probably want to take those down, sand those down a bit uh, to help with um, putting the wing together. Make sure it fits down okay. We've got our other wing here. And I think part of the landing gear area, or one of the hatches for the bottom, I think. Could be wrong. <clears throat> All right, now we got more shoulder parts. I'm guessing these are probably the new ones since it, we've got all our um, landing gear pieces in here. So this might be the um, probably the landed shoulder pieces. Again, some ejector pin marks. Make sure you uh, might want to cut those off. <clears throat> and I was thinking pr with the right setup, you might be able to be able to switch out the shoulders, but you need some magnets and uh, it might be a bit of a task, but I could imagine somebody can do it. But I think they also, a couple guys have made um, upgrades where you can have the baffles each each part of the shoulder is you know one piece and it'll actually articulate so you can move the wings up and down. So I believe the there is an upgrade kit out there for that. Um, get the bottom with the newer part here that has um, the pieces for the landing gear. Do notice some flash on the cannons right here. Uh, not too bad elsewhere. So I know a lot of people will, with the cannons, um, at least these ones, and I think I've seen it on this, but they'll go and cut it and do, um, replace it with brass tubing and stuff like that. So, but they look, I mean, just as they are, look pretty good. And then we've got our other, well, we'll do this guy here, kind of the, um, bulb areas above in front of the shoulder, shoulder guards, I guess. And again, the other uh, shoulder articulated parts. This is kind of neat here. They've actually, uh, is that raised paneling detail? I don't remember if that's in the old one or not, but um, I don't know if you'll be able to see. There is kind of a little bit of raised detail there for, there you go, you can really see it there um, in the, in that part, which matches detail on the, decals so you have that and then put the little base actual or articulated thing so you can change the flight angle and all that and then we've got our um, pewter landing gear parts which look very very nice really nice detail um, and it adds strength so you're not going to be having your bird of prey start to uh, fall over at some point. It might be, I don't know if it says in the directions, but it probably, well, I don't know. You may need to add some weight in the back, but maybe not. Probably not with these. And I guess the wings are all back there, so you probably don't need to add any weight. But something to think about just in case. So those look excellent. Excellent. Love this kit. I've started building many of them over the years, and uh, I don't think I ever finished one. Um, as a kid, I did. Built several of them, and uh, they were... They were not great! <sighs> but uh, I have the previous release of this. This is a 26... This is the 2016 release. Um which I have started, so we can kind of take a look here and see if we have any differences. I don't think so, but you never know. If something could have been tweaked or edited. Oh, I was further along in this than I thought. Some 
parts in there, but notice it's, I don't know if it's age or what, but it uh, seems like the new release is just a little, a little more green. And again, that's the beauty of these. You can paint one up as the HMS Bounty. You can paint one up as, um, you know, the, the, uh, what's Martok's ship? I know you're screaming it at the screen. The Rataran. You can paint one up as the Rataran, but make it different. Um, you can, uh, paint another version like the, uh, painted up with the Kronos 1 style paint scheme, which I did on one of their 1-1000 scale kits. You can make a Romulan version. You can make, I mean, pretty much whatever your imagination can come up with. That's, that's the beauty of this kit. And you get to weather it. That's the most fun. Who doesn't love weathering? That's uh, pretty much everything I do. I just want to get to the weathering stage. Um, so, looks about the same as this kit, only slightly greener from what I can tell. Um, if there are changes, they're probably very minuscule, but you don't mess with the classics. Now, speaking of classics, I've got an original Generations release of this kit, so we can kind of take a look here at how far this guy has come. In almost 20 years, almost 30 years, I guess, since its uh, release. There's the old directions. Old parts. Oh, remember that? Join the official Star Trek fan club. Subscribe to the Blue Printer. All right. Classic. And then some nice old yellowed decals that probably can't compete with the brand new fantastic decals. And they'd look nicer if I did not get them in a glare. So I don't know if it's the backing paper or what, but the new ones look darker, but they also look a lot crisper as well. So that's nice. I'm gonna hold up to the lettering here. It's about the same. Look, they look a little different. Font looks a little different or the thickness of the letters, but um, not too bad. Got that. And then, all right. Let's tear into this uh, vintage kit. So as you can see, the oh look, I got two old uh, decal sets that came in that old box. Get that out of the way. Now, again, why I'm celebrating the uh, the dome, the round two dome base, is this is the original base, which, boy, did I hate that. I mean, it was... It's very stylized, but it's so thin, and uh, the thing was always falling over. And it, oh, it's hollow on one side. Oh, that is kind of neat. I forgot about that. A little symbol in there. Um, but you got this flimsy thing here, and uh, just not not great. But uh, fortunately, the the new base is you're solid on that. So let's see if we can. Let's see what this guy here. All right, take a look and see if it's changed any over the years. Of course, staring at the computer screen while trying to do this, you folks might notice something that I don't. But, um, well, I do notice this guy says Ertl. Yeah, Ertl on that versus... 2010 copyright. So we've got that. I've got the bottom section. 
looks about the same. Um, obviously minus the uh, cutout here for the landing gear and also the um, different base here. We've got the part for the round two base and then the little slit there for the much more awkward base. Can't tell if it looks a little softer on the new one, but that might just be the color of the plastic. I think we're still still good there. We good to keep it in frame. All right, got the shoulders here. I think some of these might be different, but we will see. I think this is the attack position. And okay, here we go. So this one's definitely different. Um, as you can see, they definitely changed this to where this one would probably show it here in the directions. I'm sure most of you are already familiar with this, but for those that aren't, um, the original version just had it basically straight um, level and then also the attack mode. But um, in the new new tooling, they've got the slight elevation, which looks more aggressive and looks pretty cool. This kind of looks more like in Star Trek IV, it was a little more, it seemed like it was a little more flattened out. Um, this has, this uses old... Uh, model master colors, so that's probably not going to work out, but very detailed paint guide there, which is nice. Really nice uh, color callouts for the engine back there. There's that awkward display stand. This little blurb there. The Enterprise D getting beat up. So, um, but that's the difference there with those two. Kind of interesting. And then we've got our kind of the hump area. And then obviously they cut it off there for the stand. Uh, and then this is basically an entirely new sprue to the old one and then wings oh no i think that's the back side of the part of the oh a piece that's up here or up here if i recall correctly so those look about the same and again they have old ejector pin marks as well Last but not least, we've got our engines. Looks pretty much the same. I think this is the old one. Looks a little more, um, a little foggier. This one looks a little more clear. So, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, it's the same, pretty much the same kit we know and love, um, but. Like I said, with a new box art now available and won't be $10 million on eBay or whatever. So um, I think these should be out in stores soon. So I definitely recommend picking them up. Like I said, you can go crazy. You can make this exact one, make you know a Star Trek 3 version, make the HMS Bounty. Uh, you can make three with all different uh, wing configurations. I'll go ahead and bring these guys in. These are the, the old, or not old, but the... I guess new, uh, one 1,000 scale kit. Unfortunately, this one suffered a self-destruct there. And then this guy here, but this one I tried to copy the studio model, and then I have a friend who built a studio scale one that was ginormous and got some advice there. But really, just 
go to town with the colors, you know, have different shades of red there, add some whatever. I mean, you can just have fun with these. This one I was like, well, what if Kronos 1 had an escort, had escort ships or something and they were painted in the same kind of um, livery paint scheme that Kronos 1 was in, so I decided to have a little fun with that and use some of the colors, use the colors that are on the Kronos 1 Studio model, which they're coming out with a 1350 Kronos 1. S O L D sold. I cannot wait for that. But just some ideas there. And um and yeah, so but again, it is that is your canvas. Make a Romulan version. Make a Star Wars version. Um make the Bad Batch shuttle, but it's a Klingon bird of prey, but it's the Bad Batch paint scheme. With the gray and then these are like the, you know, tie tie fighter type wings. So this area would be black. And then you do the little uh, turquoise aqua weathering or whatever. Um, you know, again, it, it's such a Starfleet ships kind of want to stick to a certain thing for the most part. But Klingon ships, I mean, well, it's your model. You can do whatever you want with it. But uh, Klingon ships, I think, really are just just a canvas, a blank canvas to do all sorts of fun stuff. And then, like I said, there's Look at this. Get this old kit out of here. It's time for the new kit. Um, you know, the... It's all back up here. Um, the, uh, like I was saying, there's a lot, various aftermarket um, add-ons for this kit, um, including photo etch resin, um, baffles, for the shoulders that actually you can articulate the wings. Um, and then lighting, as far as lighting, um, obviously the original release was in 1995, so model lighting wasn't quite as much of a thing as it is now, but you can definitely, definitely do. I've seen some amazing lighted builds with this thing, and it's not like, you know, there's 1,400 windows on it, um, so you should... Uh, shouldn't be too hard to light up. I've never done one, but um, you can see we've got a couple windows here that are nice and large, so pretty easy to cut the get those out of there. A couple um, drill several holes in a line and then file that out. Um, I think those are lit up, if I recall correctly. Those uh, rectangles in the center. Um, obviously the engine and then some various spotlights and then um, I think there's a couple marker lights or um, flashers or strobes. There might be one here. I think there's one on top of here. I think there's one down here somewhere. Um, but, you know, obviously check the movie for reference so or show. But, um, yeah, I am very excited that this kit's coming back. I mean, this time I'll actually, well, I guess I have to because I said I would uh, do this. So the next video with this will be a build through that uh, hopefully will uh, turn out acceptable. <laughs> it's, it's always, it's always, when it's just in your head, you're like, oh, this will be great. And then you have to do it and you're like, okay, I have to do it. And then I have to do it and everybody's going to watch. So you're going to get to watch me succeed or fail. But otherwise, but at the least, you'll see a completed build of this lovely Klingon Bird of Prey kit. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them on there. Um, are you excited to build this kit? Have you built this kit? I'm, it's been around for almost 30 years, so I, I imagine a lot of people have built it. It's been released. Uh, this, is, this is the seventh incarnation of this kit, so... Um, but post pictures of your build too. I'm very, very curious to see what people have, um, come up with for this guy. So anyway, thank you all so much. And I look forward to, uh, building this up for you. So take care.